Let's talk a bit about me. Uh, my name is Çağıl, Çağıl Uluşahin Sönmez. I am based in London and I am Turkish. My pronouns are she and her and uh, I use uh, some of the social media listed here. You can find me on Fostodon, still using uh, and calling it Twitter <laughs> from time to time and GitHub. And here are uh, some of my affiliations, uh, but for the sake of the talk, I like to uh, uh, introduce myself uh, uh, going back uh, in the uh, timeline, uh, my personal timeline uh, back, uh, back a bit. I am um, a software developer. I studied uh, computer science. Um, I um, started working as an engineer in 2007. Around 2013, uh, I stepped into my first uh, managerial role. Uh, I became a tech lead, and since then, um, I took uh, several different leadership roles uh, in small startups and in big tech. And currently, I'm uh, working in Kraken Tech. Uh, I am leading uh, four teams. Um, it has been uh, two years since I'm with uh, Kraken Tech, and hopefully we will go into a little bit more details of my experience there. Maybe I get to share some uh, uh, examples. Uh, but other than that, uh, I have other affiliations currently. Uh, since last uh, year and a half, I'm serving in the Django Software Foundation board as uh, vice president. Uh, I'm a co-organizer of London Django Meetup since last six years. If you happen to come to uh, London, we meet every second week of the month. Uh, you're all welcome, as it's a Python Django uh, uh, event. And uh, I'm one of the organizers of PyCon Turkey. I'm a proud member of PyLadies London. And uh, I organize, help organize uh, um, around 20 Django Girls uh, workshops uh, since 2015. So, and um, today uh, my goal here is to uh, share my perspective, uh, a bottom-up perspective into tech leadership and uh, really share my experiences and uh, talk about uh, uh, some topics that I really like to uh, communicate uh, with uh, the broader community, uh, my uh, software developer uh, family. We are going to uh, first look at the structure of tech teams and team roles, um, look at some common problems and challenges. We'll talk about uh, transitioning into managerial roles. And then um, we will finish with the role of uh, leadership in tackling problems. And in the meantime, we're going to talk about a bit about diversity as well. Uh, before we kick off, uh, I'd like to learn a bit more about you. Um, and I was thinking, like, what do I want to know about the crowd? Like, there is so much I want to know about you. But I'm not interested in your titles. Maybe I'm more interested in your journey. So uh, maybe uh, can I see a hands up if you have been coding uh, more than uh, three years? Cool. Keep up, please. <laughs> okay, let's double it. Uh, keep your hands up if you're coding uh, or as it's not only coding, it's on, not only about coding. If you are working with software development teams more than six years now, cool, more than 10 years, more than 15 years, Okay, let's stop there. But yeah, okay, we, had, we have a, a good uh, mix and uh, I see we have uh, a bit more uh, 
closer to the veteran <laughs> crowd. Because, uh, I don't know if you're experienced, but uh, my experience lately, uh, we are a super lucky industry in terms of uh, age. Uh, it's, it's a great, uh, we have a great diversity at the moment. I'm working with like uh, super young people, and like people young, a lot younger than me, a lot younger than it used to be 10 years. And like, but I also have good role models because like, again, 10, 15 years ago, uh, I couldn't see uh, anyone uh, in their uh, like later phases of their life still uh, coding, so. Okay, let's start. So first, uh, I'd like to talk about um, and ask the question, uh, what are the different structures uh, of software teams? So you're uh, probably, if you're here, uh, have been part of a software team before. And I mean, we know there is as many variety as different structures of software team as there are sof software teams. Uh, but uh, let's look at the like, uh, most well-known patterns. So um, there are functional team structures, and uh, those teams are organized based on specific function, specialties, like I think in our uh, community, we see a lot of like front-end teams, back-end teams, so that's like uh, test teams, uh, design teams, so that's, that's uh, an example of a functional team structure. Cross-functional, again, uh, you have back-end engineers, front-end engineers, maybe a QA, maybe a designer, so like uh, different functions, uh, different members from different uh, domains, functions come together uh, and work together in a team. Feature teams, they're organized around specific features uh, or components of a product. And like a good example is like, um, uh, like accounts team or like authentication team, payment team, so, and a diff another one is the product team structure, responsible from a particular product or product line, taking full responsibility for its development and maintenance end to end. Then there's the popular Spotify uh, uh, squad model. I don't know if you haven't already uh, uh, watched their YouTube video. Uh, recommend as I think like it's a widely adapted structure. Uh, I'm sure you will find a few examples from your like daily teams adapting their approaches. And uh, then there are agile teams. They follow agile methodologies, particular Scrum. But really, uh, my experience is um, every team finds a structure that fits their uh, requirements people, product, and environment best. So you will probably uh, find yourself in a team that is uh, uh, lying in the middle of or sharing uh, a few uh, different prospects from different structures. And um, it is, uh, in my opinion, really uh, important understanding or from the other side communicating your team structure it helps you whether you're a manager or a individual contributor it helps you to collaborate more effectively and work towards the shared goals, uh, goals uh, better so uh, I want to give an example here I'm sure at some periods in your career you uh, done you have been in a like agile scrum team you had standups uh, my experience um, we sometimes fail to communicate like uh, it and I have team members coming to standups just because it's in the calendar and then they know they have to be there But, like, what uh, 
actually makes a stand-up uh, productive is each team member knowing and em embracing why we are doing stand-ups. And over the years, for example, currently, I, uh, I don't, I, uh, none of my teams are running uh, stand-ups on a daily basis. I think like going back five, 10 years, that idea, I, um, at least the teams uh, I was exposed to wasn't open to that, that idea. But now I think we're at a better place, like communicating our teams as a need, two-way, so that we can put practices together that fits better into like uh, our needs uh, as a team. So again, that's why understanding and communicating your team structure is important. Let's move on. Uh, next, uh, I want to talk about uh, roles. As I told you, this is a quite bottom-up uh, perspective. So um, there are different career uh, progression paths for individual contributors and leaders. So, it is important for us to uh, revisit, revisit the uh, roles and understand them a bit better. So that's why um, uh, I'm going to go into a bit detail here, not much. So, uh, in a software development team, uh, we can say we have individual contributors and we have leadership. And this actually uh, follows uh, us uh, up into the organization. So you can be working for a startup, maybe it's a two engineer startup, or uh, like I was in that startup once, <laughs> or an eight engineer stand up with one or two teams, or, that, or you can work in a, a in another team, like my current team, uh, we have uh, teams and uh, each team uh, builds a product group, still super flat, but then other organizations have like more layers and going, uh, layers going up, usually just managerial points like teams, engineering managers, senior engineer manager, directors, uh, head of uh, VPs, and so on and so forth. But let's go back to the uh, core of it. Individual comp uh, and look at first individual contributors. So responsibilities of an individual contributor in a software uh, development team, uh, what are those? So, they, focuses, uh, they focus on technical challenges. And they're responsible for fostering efficiency, productivity, and collaboration. Looking at the other side, I define three different leadership roles here. Uh, technical le leadership. Technical leadership focuses on technical excellency uh, of the team and uh, its facilitation. Managerial leadership is uh, usually responsible from people management, health, health of the team, performance of the team, individuals' carry, uh, career progression, uh, building a convenient working environment for the team, and uh, being an administrative facilitator. And moving to product leadership, uh, product lead has a more product project focus as a head and responsible for in-team and external communications like st stakeholder management. And um, those are just roles. Like uh, different people can carry uh, those hats. Uh, like um, a tech lead can be both the technical, uh, carry on the technical leadership, manager leadership and product leadership in a team or you can have one individual uh, pursuing that, that roles. And uh, sometimes you will see hybrid roles, like the tech leads. They are uh, uh, individual contributors, 
but they also sometimes uh, play the managerial leadership and most of the technical leadership role. Okay. Good. We have the structure, different structure. We have the roles. Everything is super clear. What possibly could go wrong? Let's look at the challenges and problems of ICs. Um, alignment. Alignment uh, on responsibilities and expectations from an uh, individual contributor by their uh, uh, manager and by their team is the, uh, one of the most common things uh, I'm experiencing um, on the topic of like, what's challenging for an IC these days. Um, it's important to, uh, as a leader, it's important for you to communicate uh, and align on uh, individuals, individual contributors, uh, responsibilities, and what do you expect, what's your expectation as a team member from them? Uh, and another uh, pitfall, pain point, is uh, our individual com contributors not always can get the support and direction they need from the leadership. Another point is uh, career progression. Succeeding in career progression is crucial for individual uh, contributors who aim, like I guess most of you, to advance and grow within your, uh, their roles. Uh, however, uh, it might be really challenging to work towards self's career progression without the successful facilitation by the manager and also the support and collaboration from other team members. So these challenges altogether or individually in the long term can lead to frustration, disappointment, losing motivation, and then usually uh, ends up uh, with underperformance. Let's look uh, from the other side. Uh, what is the common mistakes done under, uh, uh, in leadership? Under communication. Communication is one of the uh, most important skills uh, of all of us who wants to uh, walk the leadership path. And I think uh, most of if, uh, most of the uh, leadership role, like, I'm not, I don't want to give a percentage, but if I would give above 60% of our job is communication. Communication, communication, communication. Under communication is one of the biggest mistakes and can be a talk on its own. Like, actually, everything can be uh, a talk on its own. So let's move on. Translation. As a technical leader, well, another uh, main responsibility and unfortunately common mistake is uh, we are sometimes not going, uh, being as uh, great facilitators or good facilitators as we should be because uh, it's our, it's leadership's role to facilitate uh, the people they manage, they lead so that they can individually succeed and the team as a whole can succeed as an uh, output. Healthy teams, team happiness and wellness. This is the first lesson I learned uh, when I become a tech lead. <coughs> For the first couple of months, I thought team was working for me. Nobody told me. Actually, the person who told me that from now on, uh, my role uh, and responsibility is the other way around. Now, you are working for them. You are working for them to be happy. You are, it's your responsibility, their wellness, their productivity. This is important, and I think this is one of the common mistakes we do. And up-reporting 
is another thing like uh, leaders are responsible. They are the uh, mirrors of the team to the higher management. So uh, they represent each individual and uh, uh, team's output to upper levels. So, and I think that's something uh, we, like, uh, we need to talk more and upskills ourselves as the leaders in the tech. So let's move to the later points. And I don't have much time left, uh, so I'm going to try to speed up. Um, OK, good. We talk about leadership, but where are those leaders? Because we all like work on our technical skills, either we come either from boot camps or like we self-study, self-taught. We uh, come from like a computer science or software engineering background. And on top of it, we build our skills. And uh, we become a successful software engineer, software developer, product manager. Uh, where does, where, 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 where does leaders, engineering managers, tech leads coming from, like out of thin air? Really difficult. The transition is really difficult. You cannot become an engineering management overnight. We have hybrid ro ro roles like tech leads, uh, um, which is a good point, good introductory point. Uh, so you take some extra responsibilities and see for a set amount of time, preferably, to decide which part to continue because both parts, like you need to make a decision which skills you are going to work more on. You cannot be the best technical person in the new and best uh, people manager in the room. So, and yeah, training, it's expensive. It's not a common practice. I don't think many of us has been offered, okay, you're going to be a tech lead, you're going to be an engineering manager, uh, but before we need to send you to this training. And even if they do, the, the training is not always uh, fits into our needs and requirements. So, yeah. And another point, point is a question we should be asking ourselves, is it a promotion? Uh, when I talk with uh, my team members with the opportunity to move to the uh, leadership part, I uh, try to, like, I try to uh, give them a heads up and make their own research. Like, uh, this is going to be a different part for you. Maybe it won't look like, it won't look very different in the short term, but in the long term, it is going to be a lot different and at some point, your goal is to be hands-off. And uh, we are coming to one of my favorite slides. I am not one of them, yeah. Like, uh, I uh, didn't have many women in the teams I have been working on for many, many, many years. And uh, I think we are doing pretty good because I'm looking into Europe Python this year and like I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot more diversity, which is good, which is good, uh, which is why we should be talking about what's the role of the leadership in solving the diversity problem in tech. It cannot be bottom up, uh, and we already know diverse teams are more productive and can work more efficiently. Uh, so all the leaders in the tech industry need to take this into their agenda and start to work their skills to create more inclusive and more diverse cultures, which has been uh, addressed by one of the keynotes uh, yesterday. Um, and yeah, again, uh, another topic we could go into detail. Uh, before finish, I want to give an example on this topic, um, just to maybe empower you on the topic. Uh, and like, this is a personal uh, 
experience, so might not be relate to all of you, but a story that you can take with you. Uh, in the previous company I used to work for, it was a small startup, and when I joined, the tech team was like a small tech team of uh, over 10, like around 15 people, and I was only a woman. Uh, and uh, I worked in that startup four years. I spent the last year as head of engineering. And uh, when I become head of engineering, we had 40% uh, representation uh, from people who identified themselves as female. And it wasn't a coincidence. It was sometimes me <laughs> shouting out loud, like, we need more diversity. Good, we have a candidate. Do we have a, another one who's coming from a diverse background? And I continue, continue, small efforts. And okay, maybe this was a coincidence, but now I'm working in a bigger team. And uh, we have, uh, last time I checked, 20% of uh, uh, representation uh, from uh, underrepresented genders in tech team uh, from the people that are hands-on. And uh, I'm working with, uh, like, uh, I'm working with four, four teams. And uh, after three, uh, two years, I'm really happy uh, to say that 75% uh, of tech leads that I'm working directly with are, uh, they identify as women. So, it is doable. It will be, if it will be one example, it will be a coincidence, but two examples, maybe there is something happening here. So before I finish, I invite you to think and talk about these topics more and in a constructive way. And I'd like to thank you all. Thank you, Cheryl, for the talk. We still have two minutes for the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please align near the microphone. I have a question. Um, what made you decide to transition into a leadership role when you weren't? Uh, what made me transition? Uh, I had good uh, programming, uh, good uh, problem solving skills and abstraction skills. So I was usually the one uh, who came uh, with solutions to uh, uh, operational or technical problems. And this happened uh, once, twice, 10 times, 20 times. And then they were like, uh, nobody asked me. They promoted me. That was 11 years ago. Yeah, it's also a follow-up question because you didn't really go into depth into if it's a promotion or not, but what do you feel like? I have mixed feelings because, um, and I didn't mention, like the path doesn't need to be one way. Like uh, I use every opportunity to be hands-on. Like for example, uh, when I was head of engineering in my previous company, I, I was hands-off. But when I uh, start working in Kraken, I uh, I managed to work hands-on for two whole years until very recently. Uh, switching to a hands-off uh, position. So like, you define your own way, you, ch ch like, you choose your own uh, path. I think what I wanted to communicate is, uh, it's important that you do it in a conscious way. Like, is it a promotion? You need to ask this question, why am I being offered this position? Because of my skills or, or what? Can you communicate it with me? please, might be the first question to start. All right, thank you. Yeah, hello. Um, I think you, you have a technical background and you promoted to be a manager. So you begin as a beginner again, uh, because as a manager you need other skills, right? Yes, and yes. And how, how do you get these skills? Yes, uh, I, I, uh, if you look at it like, uh, as a manager of manager, now I only have uh, over uh, one year experience. So that would put me, uh, that would make me a junior 
uh, director of uh, manager of managers. So, and that's what I'm doing. I'm working on mm -hmm. now this part, and that's that's inevitable if you change parts. Okay, thank you. Um, I imagine that working as a manager of managers is going to give you. Um, a lot of really interesting experiences where you have different managers who perform well and who perform badly. Um, so my question is, uh, have you ever known any managers who work part-time or have any accommodations around that? And how have you best kind of worked with that? If, uh, if I have ever had uh, managers that uh, I had uh, uneasy relationships with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Thank you for asking this. Um, my previous manager, uh, Tony, we worked together over t uh, three years. Uh, and uh, I, like, I always thought in the beginning, uh, like, he was, like, and that's a scare word in leadership. He was micromanaging me. Uh, but also, like, uh, he is the person uh, I'm so grateful for, for because he, like, uh, working with him was the best thing that ha happened, ever happened to me after working my, my, with my PhD advisor, Arzjan, because they grow me so much. So, like, we are all people, like, and we are all working on ourselves. Us having not able to manage one skill doesn't mean we succeed in 10 other skills. Like, he's, like, he's, he's again at the top of the board with Arjun for me, even though like, he was also growing some of his skills on management. I like to uh, uh, keep this example with me uh, when we look into that type of problems. But of course, side note, we should receive feedback as managers and keep working on our skills. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the talk, it was really interesting. Um, one of the points that you pointed out for effective leadership was facilitating and ensuring wellness of your team members. I was wondering if you had any kind of tips for how to achieve that, especially if the team that you're working with can often be remote and maybe you're not engaging with them directly every day, how you can kind of effectively measure and get metrics on their happiness and any pain points that they may be experiencing and not expressing for whatever reason. Okay, great question again, thank you. Uh, maybe I come up with a talk next year on that because I, I have 10, like a big list. One answer, uh, one-on-ones with, with the people you're managing or with your managers is a space for you. Like, as a manager, that's a dedicated time for me to ask the question, how are you, in 10 different ways. Uh, like, with most of uh, the people I manage, we spend half an hour together every week, and we just talk about them, how they are, how was their week technically, how, how was their week with stakeholders, what was the blockers, what was personal problems they had. Uh, so that's, that's the relationship I try to build. Uh, and yeah, there are uh, other uh, people who are uh, better than uh, me uh, giving trainings on those topics as well. So I'll, I think like uh, <laughs> we uh, passed uh, our time, uh, five minutes, and some of, the, uh, some of the people are staying here just to be nice, but like the food is getting cold, so <laughs> like, I'm happy to accept questions offline. Uh, shall we close? Uh, yes, officially we are five minutes over time. I mean, this room is empty, so if you want to stay, you can. Uh, yeah, but maybe we'll officially wrap up. And yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'll be here for the questions. Please yeah. come over and let's talk.